I walked into a room with a curtain and they said to me, are you ready? And they pulled the curtain back and there was my daughter. Um, her fists were clenched, her jaw was clenched, she was beaten. She suffered terribly at the hands of a monster with no remorse. Where does that leave me as her mother? That leaves me in a position to either die or find the strength somewhere from within to fight. Fight not only for Carly, but fight for every single young person that is online trying to make connections. I believe that this is what Carly would want me to do. My name is Sonia Ryan. I'm the founder of the Carly Ryan Foundation. So we promote online safety nationally. The idea behind Carly's Law is to prevent suffering. So we want to give more power to the police to be able to detain a potentially dangerous criminal before they harm a child. In your experience as a police officer, do you think there were circumstances when the police could not act because it fell short of proving that element of sexual intent. Yes I do. Clearly what you've pointed out is a deficiency in law. It's the earliest possible intervention in a scenario that could ultimately end in tragedy and I think that's the Carly Ryan story. Carly was a real light. She was really kind and trusting and loving. Unfortunately I believe that it's those very qualities that Gary Newman used to, to lure my daughter. Carly was super excited that she'd meet the, met this boy online and I would look over her shoulder and she'd be having pretty normal conversations about life and school. Now, this happened for quite some time, over an 18 month period. And you know, I just believed that Brandon was just another one of her friends. And then one day she came to me and said, Mum, I think I've got feelings for this boy, I really like him. And I'd love for you to meet his dad. And so I spoke to whom I thought was Brandon's father on the telephone. It sounded like a normal man, told me he was a security guard, um, said he was coming through South Australia and would like to drop some, some presents off for her birthday. And I met Gary Newman, posing as Brandon's father, Shane. He showed me a security license with all fake details. He was wearing a security shirt with a fake embroidered emblem. He went to so much trouble to deceive us Nothing could have prepared myself or Carly for a criminal like this. Little did we know he was operating 200 fake profiles of young men online to lure girls. So Gary Newman was actually Brandon. He came to visit, he didn't sit near Carly, he didn't do anything inappropriate. It wasn't until the last day of his visit that he looked at Carly in a certain way and it gave me the shivers. And I thought, oh no something's wrong and you know I kicked him out of the house and I said if he come back or tried to talk to Carly I would contact police. I took her mobile phone from her, I cut the internet off, little did I know that he had access to our home line so while I was at work he was calling Carly and I believe that he had already been able to establish that real trust with her. She believed that Brandon was real. She believed that Brandon loved her and little did I know that Gary Newman was planning to come back to Adelaide to, in his words, fix her up. So um, on February 19th, 2007, Carly came to me all dressed up and said to me, Mum, I'm going to go and meet my friends in the city. We're going to hang out. I'm going to go back to my friend's house. Is it all right if I stay there overnight? So it was nothing out of the ordinary. And um, she skipped off the veranda and she said, love you, mum. And little did I know, that would be the very last time I'd see my daughter. Carly's body was found that morning at 6 a.m. in the shallows of Port Elliot. Carly Ryan's 48-year-old alleged killer is taken into custody. Carly's killer was found guilty of her murder and sentenced to life in prison. When everything happened to Carly, it was like being pulled into some kind of black abyss that Gary Newman had created. 
I can't sit in that space because it's sitting in her suffering and it would just dissolve my soul. I think what people don't realise is the trauma and I wouldn't want them to realise. Unfortunately, these crimes continue to happen and there's more and more people being arrested for trying to procure children. Rapidly changing technologies and the anonymity of the internet have resulted in unprecedented opportunities for child sex offenders. Through the work that we do, we get a lot of contact from kids who believe that they're speaking to whom they think is a friend online or a, or a potential boyfriend or girlfriend. He said he was 17, he said he was from California, he started to just kind of talk to me really nice and he asked me to meet him a couple of times. Two months after I started talking to him, I get a message from the police saying basically, you know, he wasn't who he said he was, he was a 57 year old man and, you know, you should be more careful online. Like I might have gone to meet him and it, you know, it makes me feel terrible now because you know, something could have happened to me. And so currently, it's actually not against the law to do that to a child. If Carly's law was implemented, then it would be against the law. that person, if they're careful in their communications with a child, would not have committed an offence. Well, I introduced this law in the Senate a couple of years ago because if the current law is really inadequate. There are lots of predators out there who lie about their age to a child and then try and meet them. And right now, the police can't do anything about it because they can't prove a sexual purpose. The department does not support the proposed bill. I was really quite surprised at the lack of traction it received. But we also need to contemplate the, the full range of circumstances. On the face of it, that, is, that would be an offence. It was cast too broadly in the sense that it would drag in conduct that was not actually criminal and that was the reason why it was knocked back. Some of the objections were to do with, well, what if a disabled person, you know, didn't know what they were doing and tried to make contact with a minor? Now, of course, it's up to the discretion of the authorities. You must take great care to ensure that it targets the harm that you want to target. I've spoken to different police who have said, you know what, this could make a real difference. We could end up, you know, apprehending somebody, seizing their computer, being able to take DNA before they harm a child. Police always want more powers. They may have the best intentions, but if you give greatly enlarged powers to police officers and law enforcement, there are going to be unintended consequences of that too. Some of the concerns were fair enough in terms of how it would work at a technical level, uh, but ultimately the law needs to change because there's currently a massive loophole in it. How's that petition going? It's going really, really well. Um, we've got some really fantastic comments. So I started um, the Change.org petition. I wanted to see what the Australian community thought about Carly's Law and if it was important. We have now nearly 60,000 signatures and so many comments of support. 15 year old daughter was groomed online by a man 20 years older yeah. and the law wouldn't help me. If there is a petition with a very large number of signatures, that raises the issue for the politicians. But it remains the politicians' responsibility to make laws responsibly. Well, we're going to try again. The Senate comes back on the 30th of August and in that very first sitting week, we're going to push it really hard. I don't talk about what happened to my daughter for nothing. I do this because I believe in the protection of our children. I can't imagine what Sonia went through. It would be every parent's worst nightmare. You know, you need to change the law. It's as simple as that.